Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, October 21st, 2011. We had a nice weekend last week, it was like summer conditions, but this week it's been raining and it's really like fall conditions here. YouTuber was asking me if we had snow yet up here. Well, actually we haven't yet, but we had a bit of hail last night and it's been below zero a couple nights. Sometimes we'll get the odd snow in October, but usually it comes in November. In November it really melts a lot though and usually in December that's when the snow stays. I'm telling you guys this because I have a lot of viewers from Australia and they're in a different hemisphere so their seasons are totally the opposite of ours. Actually right now it's the spring over there which is kind of odd because I've lived all my life here and I'm so used to these months here being the fall so it's kind of strange for me. And I've got the old stove burning today here. I'll be selling that for $200 or best offer. And before I get started, a YouTuber wanted to see the inside of my stove to see if there's burn tubes in there. I'll show you guys what it looks like in there. There's some tubes up top here. I don't know if that's what he meant by burn tubes. And it's all lined up with bricks. And that little plate in there is to get the ashes out into the ash tray at the bottom of the stove. Then you just pull out the tray here and all your ashes are in here. And that's the model of the stove here. It's an XVR dash one and it's made by flame and this stove here is made in Quebec my first question today is in regards to chainsaws a youtuber is wondering why some chainsaws have two nuts to hold the clutch cover and others only have one well here's three saws here usually when your saw is really small you're only going to have one nut holding the bar or the cover like the MS180C here it's got the toolless adjustment for the chain and bar but actually, it only ends up being like one nut there. This Poulan here is a bit bigger and it's got two nuts holding the clutch cover. So the bigger your saw gets, you're going to have two nuts here. And sometimes the nuts are even bigger. Like on this old steel here, it's got two big nuts there that hold the cover. And on most bigger steel chainsaws, you're going to have two nuts this size here. And when you have two nuts holding the cover, it's much better because it's a lot tighter. Which in turn, your bar and chain will stay adjusted properly much longer. My next question today is for you small engine repair guys out there. And this tip is specifically for when you get old home like chainsaws to repair. And here's a couple old chainsaws here. Now when you get old chainsaws like this in your shop to repair, especially if you don't know the individual bringing it in, you should get at least a one hour down payment. That's because when you work on them sometimes, they end up needing parts that are no longer available. Sometimes you'll call people and tell them they need a part that is no longer available or they need too much work to be repaired and they won't even come back and pick it up. So you may have wasted an hour, two, or three, and that's your time that's gone down the drain. A lot of people figure, well, if it's not repaired, I don't need to pay the guy. But the way it works in the shop is that the time you use to even look at something, you have to be paid for that. When you bring your car in to the garage to be looked at, you have to pay them just to look at it, and then when they repair it, that's an extra charge. I'm just telling you guys this because I've had this happen to me many times, and now when people come in with these saws, I either ask for a one hour down payment or I tell them that even if I look at it and it's not worth repairing, that I need to get paid for my time. Usually if I've spent two to three hours on it and it still doesn't work, I'll still ask for a one hour payment. I know I'm still in the hole doing that, but at least you're getting something for it and sometimes you can keep the old saw for parts. But don't pay too much for old saws for parts like that because they may sit in your garage or your shop for years just cluttering up your space and you're never going to get your money back. So just be careful. Even if you know these people bringing in these old saws to be repaired, make sure to explain to them that even if it ends up being fatal, that it's not worth fixing, that you still need to get paid for your time. Sometimes I forget to do that, but usually now I always remember to tell people that. That way they're not surprised or angry when you tell them that it's not worth fixing but they still have to pay you. To give you an example, this old Home Light 330, I worked on it for 2-3 hours, put a new carb kit in it and it ended up being that the crank bearings are shot and the seals. Now I took out my carb kit because I had just put it in, I let it dry, I'll be able to use it somewhere else, but I've spent 2-3 hours on it and the thing ends up not being worth fixing. But the guy that brought it in knows that he will pay me for my time that I've spent on it. Now he's going to let me keep it for parts, I'm only going to charge him one hour to work on it. Now sometimes if the saw ends up having a lot of good parts and you need them for yourself or somebody else, you can tell the customer that brought the saw in the first place that you're not going to charge them at all. 
Sometimes I end up doing that when they bring me something that's still good for parts. But when the old home light saw I'm working on is pretty beat up and there's nothing left that's good, like if the piston and the cylinder are scored, then really it's not worth much or hardly anything. And just a tip, like I mentioned earlier, is don't pay much for old saws like that unless there are parts on it that are really good for you. Because what can happen is you can end up buying all these old saws and before you know it, you've spent a lot of money collecting old chainsaws that are just sitting there. So economically, it doesn't make much sense. But usually you'll find that most customers don't want to take back the old chainsaw. They'll just give it to you for parts or whatever. And that's usually how it ends. And my last tip for today, it's regarding the small steel MS-170 and MS-180 chainsaw. It also applies to the 017 and the 018, which is the older model of these saws here. Now some YouTubers tell me I've taken the carb apart, put a new carb kit, new fuel line, filter and everything and it still doesn't want to run properly. It bogs down they say. Well in that case if you've done all that and it still doesn't run properly, you may want to take off this little cover here on the muffler. And right under the cover over here there's going to be a screen similar to this and you want to make sure that it's not plugged with carbon. If the screen is plugged up, your saw is not going to accelerate properly and it may bog down when you're cutting wood. It's pretty simple, just remove the screen, you can heat it up with a torch or clean it with a wire brush, reinstall it, and if that was your problem, you're going to see a huge improvement. It's a problem I often get with grass trimmers and other chainsaws as well. And if you see a lot of carbon in there, you may want to take off the whole muffler and clean it as well. You may want to clean the port on the cylinder as well if it's loaded up with carbon. Here's an example of an exhaust port here. Sometimes they get all carboned up. But if you clean it inside here, you got to be extremely careful because if any carbon gets inside the cylinder, it could scratch up your cylinder and your piston and rings and make your saw totally useless. What usually causes too much carbon buildup like that is when people put too much oil in their gas. I mix my gas at 45 to 1, which ends up being 100 milliliters of oil to 4.5 liters of gas. And I buy the higher octane fuel for all my two cycle engines. So that'll wrap it up for today. Thanks for watching. I want to welcome all my new subscribers. I want to thank all those who regularly watch my videos and comment. It's much appreciated. And hopefully you guys will have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.